Hi guys, I'm Amanda Dobson, the founder of Seven Level Profits, and this is what makes me click. Welcome to What Makes You Click. I'm Shannon Smith, and today I'm joined by somebody who got her start in the industry and found her passion through photocopying some video sales letters. She already had her law degree and today is a highly successful marketer um, who is currently with Agora Financial. Welcome today to Amanda Dobson. Thanks for having me, lady. I'm so happy to be here at ClickBank. Um, they've been such a big part of uh, my career and how I've learned throughout this process. So I'm super happy to be here and uh, talking to you guys. Awesome. Thank you for coming. Um, we have, I haven't heard this story, so I'm excited to hear it, but I heard that this all goes back to something in high school. What happened in high school that kind of led you onto the path of, of uh, getting into internet marketing? Oh, this is a really funny story. Um, so in high school, I was very like, a, I was a conflicted child. I spent my first couple of years thinking I was just like punker, like I wanted to be like heavy metal. and. Um, and then, you know, I kind of realized that that wasn't who I was, so then I decided to try out the whole, like, valley girl, you know, like, Sex and the City of the Time was, like, my life, like, designer stuff, like, was totally, like, that was, like, what excited me at the time, so that was kind of... Were there like, hairstyles that went along with each oh, one of this? Oh, yeah, I haven't really lost the hairstyle thing yet, but, like, I feel like my taste in shoes has gotten a little better, you know, like, it's changed a little bit. Um, but I actually took marketing and business throughout high school, and I had a professor uh, at the time and I, like, I, don't, I guess he didn't see the potential or didn't see me in that kind of way. I was actually working at my summer job before heading off to university at a restaurant. And I saw him and he's like, well, you know, like, what are your plans after high school? And I was like, well, um, you know, I'm going to study law. So, like, I'm heading to go off to go to university and, you know, that's um, what I want to do. And he was like, really? Like, I kind of just imagine you'd kind of just marry rich and that's kind of, you know, that's what you would do. Um, and I, it, honestly, I think it took me like two weeks to process that. Like I was just like, did that really just happen? Um, so I always remind myself, like those who can't, those who do do, those who can do do, and those who can't do teach. Um, and that came full circle later on when um, I got asked to actually speak at the high school um, about alternative careers. And of course, like just being as petty as I can be, like I talked about like online marketing and how like. Uh, you know, all of the cool things that I had learned and like all of my clients and all of the money that we were bringing in and all of this cool stuff. So it was nice to see, uh, to be able to get on stage and smirk at him from a distance, like knowing that, um, you know, he didn't think that was possible of me. So, you know, it was cool to be able to talk to people like you can be anything and still like put your heart into something and, and be successful at it. Um, hindsight is amazing. So what, what would you, if you were talking to that Amanda that was in high school who had the teacher who told her that she should marry rich, what would you, what advice would you give her knowing what you know today? <laughs> well, life would certainly be a lot easier had I followed his advice. Um, so um, I, I would always just encourage myself, and I tell this to uh, my two little girls as well, is just be curious. You know, It was curiosity that led me into discovering how to write sales copy, and then it was curiosity that taught that led me to learn about sales funnels and learn about platforms and technology and different types of marketing. So be curious. And if you don't know, um, you know, I've got people that I mentor on a regular basis and their question is always to me like, how do I know what I'm going to be good at? And my answer to that is, well, get your fingers into everything and see what sticks. Um, you know, poke your head into meetings and ask if you can sit down and be part of things. Um, always be curious and always be trying to push the envelope and try and improve yourself just by exploring new options and new things. So had I met myself then, I would have said, you know, like, don't be discouraged by, like, the expectations of the people around you and don't limit yourself by, like, what people impose on you or what they think about you and stay curious. Amazing. Um, what... What are you good at? What would you say your biggest strengths are? <laughs> so my um, specialty right now, um, in addition to funnel optimization, I do a lot of split testing, um, copywriting, and that kind of stuff. But for the last um, year or so, I've actually specialized in just introducing new traffic channels. Um, so I run a program called Seven Level Profits, where I teach people how to leverage their email list to then build a text message marketing list, to then build a messenger bot list. Um, and the idea is to build out seven different types of communication that you can integrate into your marketing to really create a fully comprehensive strategy um, for how to talk to your customers, when to talk to them, and where to talk to them. Um, knowing that marketing is heading towards more conversational style, um, that just seemed you know, to be the next progression for me. So that's kind of my specialty at the moment. Awesome. 
So traditionally, marketing has been a, a male-dominated industry. Uh, what, what tips or tricks do you have for women who are trying to break in and, and make a more place for themselves? Yeah, I get asked that all the time. Um, and I kind of have a different approach to um, women in this industry than, than most people. I get asked all the time to be part of like women's only masterminds and women's only Facebook groups and you know the women that are there to empower others. And you know, I kind of have the opposite approach. I love having the idea of having a, a female support system and you know being able to talk and communicate with people who have relatable issues. But at the same time, like when it comes to masterminds and stuff. I like to challenge myself and put myself in positions like where there are a lot of men around because at the end of the day I want to be able to cut it with the big boys and it shouldn't matter if I'm a woman or a man or any of those things like I, I know that I can hold my own in those rooms so I'm not worried about that and I don't think it's healthy for women to you know downplay their skills or their ability because of their gender I think we've made massive leaps and bounds in the market and I don't think that that's the same problem that it used to be and, and I'm encouraged more and more when I go to events like TNC and I go to events like War Room. Um, when I first joined War Room, um, which is a, a, a mastermind group, it was predominantly men. There was only maybe six or seven women that were actually at the events um, when I first joined and now it's like, like there's I think probably 30 or 40 percent women. Like it's just getting to be more and more um, aim towards uh, women and inclusive of women not that it was exclusive before but I just mean like there's more successful business owners that are willing to step forward and be like you know what I want to challenge myself and I want to play with the big boys and learn all of these skills and it doesn't matter you know where I sit whether I'm male or female um, so my advice is always just like don't think of it as male or female like if you if you are driven and you're curious and you have a product and you want to learn and you want to be successful um, find a way to make it happen. You know, like don't don't hold yourself back because you think that like you're intimidated by that situation. That's how we all move forward and ahead. So as much as I love the idea of, um, you know, having that support system, I definitely don't think like it's like I'd love to see more women participate in these kinds of programs and um, these masterminds and these groups that are um, you know aimed for everybody. Um, but as a woman in the marketplace, we have a very specific skill set, whereas like we, we understand people, we're more empathetic, we are, um, in my experience, tend to be harder working. Um, so play that to your advantage. And I, that's what I've always been able to do in the rooms because, you know, I come into a room sometimes and uh, there's always like a long standing joke. I'm always mistaken as somebody's assistant or oh, so, you know, like it, and, and it's, it's always really funny because they find out that I'm actually the one that is like implementing all of this stuff and learning all of these lessons to share with, you know, friends and, you know, other marketers in the business. So it's really natural for people to just assume like, oh, like she's just an assistant, like whatever. And I love the look on people's faces, like when they see that it's actually like a woman that's actually moving all of this stuff forward. Like for the last couple of years, I've written all of the copy for survival life. So I can't like walking into our big affiliate party and then all of these guys finding out that it's this like 27 year old blonde Canadian girl that's writing all of this survival copy. You know, I'm empathetic and I'm skilled and I know how to understand my audience. So learning how to harness those skill sets as a woman and leverage them in business actually gives us a competitive advantage if we know how to do it right. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, what is one of your biggest, best challenge, best failures? So something where like you just completely didn't go the way you thought it was going to go, but you learned so much from it. From it. Um, I tend to have that a lot with different ad platforms. <laughs> So sometimes it's really hit or miss. Um, if you've got a new product or a new service, um, sometimes this happens with new clients that are startup businesses and they don't quite know their audience. Um, if you don't do your research properly, like I've had it before, um, I've done this a lot. Um, I've set up ad campaigns before and forgot them and like had like offers that are already deadlined and like I'm still running traffic to them. Like I've done that a few times before. Um, but for me, it just became like a focus thing. It's like, you gotta stop and like slow down. And like, I'm always trying to do so many things at once because like, I'm so curious. Like I wanna play around with so many things. So I'll like start a Google ad campaign that I'm testing and completely forget about it. Or like, um, but sometimes like if, uh, um, I've made the mistake before of just not researching um, audiences well enough. So just like I'm targeting the wrong person. Um, and I created a system for myself to actually learn more about um, audiences and products and how to become those people. Um, I do a lot of research on Quora and Reddit and Amazon reviews. Um, I actually like to get into inboxes for things like Facebook Messenger for clients as well. So I can see how people are talking to them and like, you know, who are the types of people that they're talking to so that like when I'm 
launching a product, I'm not launching it to completely the wrong people. Because I've had that before um, where a client isn't clear enough on their product or their position in the market. Um, so I'll try, I'll go against my best instincts to, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, my biggest mistakes are always when I go with the client and what they think is right versus what I know is right. So, you know, if you've got a client who's trying to target two different markets, you know, trying to make an offer that serves both markets is much more of a challenge than building two offers that serve two markets. Um, so that's probably my, has been my biggest kind of learning curve over the last little while is just being confident and, and knowing that like I've, you know, I've done this for so long that I, I know better but still be respectful of clients' wishes while trying to accomplish the end game. Um, so that's kind of a balance, but it's important for you know, agency owners and for people who run marketing for other people to kind of understand that. That's awesome. So you spoke about, um, and I don't expect you to give everything away because you've got an amazing course, and I've seen her presentation. She does a fantastic job um, on stage as well. But what are some of the traffic sources that you see as like up and comers? Um, so for me, I'm, I'm not so much looking at traffic sources as traffic channels. So um, for me, I know, um, I think 2019 is going to be a big year for more conversational style marketing platforms like SMS marketing. Um, I'm pretty excited to have my course come out in uh, just a couple days. Um, and then we've got, you know, Facebook Messenger bots and a more transaction that's based on conversation. So these bots are, you know, based on an interaction that are coming into you. And I think it's a really powerful tool and it's good for um, creating long term uh, customers and prospects for your business to actually have a conversation with them, like bring them into your world, let them be part of the conversation, let them help decide what products are sold or, you know, how, um, you know, how they're going to be sold. Um, I've spent a lot of time in the last um, six months working on Facebook groups and how to leverage data in Facebook groups. Like I'm going into my Facebook groups for our continuity programs and being like, hey guys, like uh, for our survival market, we were wanting to break into, um, uh, more biz op stuff like we wanted to teach them how to make money on the weekends so I'm like hey guys like what skills are you guys learning outside of survival that if like the economy crashed tomorrow you could barter to like serve your family so the answers were like well blacksmithing and gardening so my next move was then to create like products that are like blacksmithing for, for profits like how do you take a hobby from a weekend like doing this and turn it into a business so uh, and then I'm asking them like you know like what is your life like? When are when do you have your free time? Like I'm mining them for data, but to them it's engagement. Like they think I like they're they're thinking that I'm like just wanting to get more involved in their life, but really they're telling me what to sell, how to sell it, who to sell it to, when and, to sell it. and when to sell it. So I think if we get as marketers, if we get smarter at paying attention and having a conversation um, with our buyers and with the people that are in our continuity programs, or even prospects, you know, I think the more we involve them in the process, the more likely they are to purchase from us, but to stay with us. You know, when you when you create a friendship and a relationship with your customers, you know, that's really where you want to be. Because you're truly listening to them. Yeah, yeah, and you're letting them feel like they're part of you, especially um, you know if you've got a business where you're the face of your business. Um, it's really great for them to feel like they're a little part of your life. Even if they know or don't know that it's automated, it doesn't really matter. Like getting a text message from somebody is so personal. Um, and it's really important to remember to keep it personal when you're in those conversational channels. I mean, we know at the end of the day it's all about sales and promotions, but you want them to feel like they're part of the world. They're part of the process for you. They matter. So it's really important to, when you're choosing how to build out those platforms, you keep that in mind. That's awesome. Um, so if somebody wants to purchase your SMS course or promote it, like where, where can they find information about that? Clickbank! So was, Clickbank for me was just like the obvious choice. You know, like I had an idea and like I've been wanting to put this SMS course out for a while, but it's like, you know, I'm a busy professional. I have two kids. Like I travel a lot. I do a lot of public speaking. So for me, I was like, okay, how, like, how can I bring this to life really quickly? Um, and Clickbank did that for me. You know, like I built the course within... Took me a couple of days of filming the course. I spent weeks like preparing the content, um, but you know it took a matter of hours like to get the offer up on ClickBank. And you know now that it's there, you know affiliates can run it. I know like you guys are going to be um, using it for your team to train your internal staff. Um, so I'm pretty excited about the course. But for me, like if you're if you're interested in the course or promoting it. It's on ClickBank. It's in the marketplace. <laughs> awesome. And what's the what's the official title? 
I, I called it the SMS squeeze strategy. And I recorded the course without even knowing what I was going to call it. Um, I went back and forth. There was a lot of ridiculous names that like came to my head. But the, the idea behind the SMS course was to teach people how to squeeze the most out of what they already had. So you know, if you've got an email list, this course teaches you how to extract more money from there. Like if you've got leads coming in, it teaches you how to extract more money from those leads. Because at the end of the day, like we're paying for every eyeball that hits our landing page. So, you know, my goal with this course was to help. And I actually built this course for, click. Like when I was writing it, I was writing it for ClickBank and for ClickBank's users because I know what that life is like. And I know that every penny matters and every little bit closer profitability I get from cold traffic or affiliate traffic, you know, that's cash flow. So as a business owner, cash flow is like the forefront of my mind. Like all of that stuff's really great, but at the end of the day, I have to pay the traffic bills. <laughs> so for me, like I built this course for that reason. So the SMS squeeze strategy is, you know, how do you squeeze an additional opt-in out of your landing page without hurting your conversions? How do you squeeze an extra couple of dollars out of your average order value? How do you increase um, your return on investment on your ad spend? But an SMS was the solution for me. Um, so I call it the SMS squeeze strategy, and you know it, it is what it is. I, like that was just the only thing that represented to me what the course could do. So we talked about the past. Now, if we can like do a little future, where are you going to be in five years? Well, not married rich apparently because I didn't follow <laughs> the right advice. But uh, you never know. Yeah, I married rich or on a beach somewhere. You know, maybe collecting ClickBank royalty checks. That'd be nice. No. Um, you know, when I set out on this mission, this was, I, I didn't really necessarily do this for me, but for me, like from being a, from a small town where it's like, there's not a lot of expectations for women. Like for me, it was like, I want to make my name in the industry. And I want to be like, when you think of females in marketing, I want to be the first thing that comes to your mind. So within five years, um, I, I'm already making great leaps and bounds towards that. You know, I'm speaking on the biggest stages and, you know, I've, you know, I've, done really well in the industry for myself but you know five years from now I want to be a leader like within five years like I hope <laughs> by then I've developed something that no one else has you know like I'm looking for a new channel or a new tactic or a new strategy um, I love to teach and share with people so I'm hoping like within the next couple of years um, I'm more in an educational um, arena but I also want to be on the agency side um, and I run an agency now um, where I have you know multiple clients so I can be all over the place and be in different niches and different markets um, and continue learning because that's you know what it's about for me I'm all about learning um, so you know I'm hoping to be running a fairly set a fairly decent sized agency within the next couple of years where I can you know be playing with some of the big players and uh, you know building out new sources and trying to play with new things. <laughs> awesome. Sounds exciting. I hope I I'm, I'm very confident this will come true because you're more than more than way more than halfway there. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. If if anybody hasn't had the chance to see Amanda on stage, I know that she you know has been on stage. She does a fantastic presentation, but I've, I've seen you at, um, at TNC. I've seen you at Flight Club, Mimosa Mastermind, War Room. So if you have the opportunity, you should definitely take it. She's great content. It's uh it's been interesting. I like I still get so nervous sometimes. Like Platinum Summit last year was such a like a fun experience for me, but I had to speak on the last. I was the last speaker at Platinum Summit. So the whole trip, I was like so nervous and shaky and like I didn't want to have fun or like go out and do anything because I was so nervous in anticipation for that presentation. Um, but apparently it went well because I'm she here. Killed she killed it. It was <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm here. So, uh, so anyways, I always appreciate everything that ClickBank's done. And, you know, I love being here and sharing some of this information with you guys. And I hope you get a chance to take a look at the course. Yeah. So we like to close off all of our segments with asking you what makes you click. Well, um, I love to empower entrepreneurs and to work with them to actually bring their ideas to life. Um, and recently that's become bringing my own ideas to life. So I get this on a whole nother level. Um, so, you know, I'm in this and I work so closely with ClickBank because I love watching this happen. You know, I love seeing ideas being shared and lives being changed based on not just the platform and how it's used, but the relationships among the affiliates. Like, you truly get a support system as well, and I feel like that's so important when you're, whether you've been in business for a while or you're new to business, you know, just that community, and it's the whole reason I'm in marketing and the whole reason that, you know, I work with you guys and I'm always, you know, helping you guys improve your platform and, you know, all of the relationships with all of your users, but it's something that you don't find anywhere else, so that's why I'm here. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Busy, busy schedule. <laughs> I love it. First time in Boise. <laughs>
Anyways, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out Amanda's um, new SMS course.